All right, so it has been a little bit over a year since the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K was announced at NAB last year, and I got my first hands-on experience with it. And since the camera was announced, it has been a year and still not a lot of people have actually got their camera. Well, in this video, I'm here to talk about all the specs and my opinions, but really I'm gonna answer one very specific question, and that is, was this camera worth the wait? What's good, creative fan? Brandon Washington here. First of all, if you're brand new to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button because this channel is all about filmmaking gear, tips, and tutorials. And in today's video, we are taking a look at the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Now, this camera, as I mentioned before, is a camera that was announced last year at NAB, and the specs on it are absolutely insane. I mean, this thing shoots 4K up to 60 frames per second. It does 1080p at 120 frames per second. And get this, the biggest thing of it all is the fact that it shoots raw. But now, since last year, they've actually updated it. So it's not just shooting Cinema D&G raw, it's actually shooting Black Magic raw. Now the model I got a chance to review was actually one that a friend of mine had rented. And so it's not one that I personally own. And that's because I personally did not believe that this camera was worth pre-ordering because of the unknowns of it. And we're gonna jump into a lot of those things and now that we do know that still make this camera something to really have to consider. Now in order to break this review down because this was a big one, I wanna first start talking about the usage of the camera. Now, using this camera is very simple. I mean, first of all, it has this massive touchscreen on the back and really everything is touchable, whether you are tapping for focus, if you have a lens that supports that, whether you are trying to navigate through the menus, um, no matter what you're really trying to do with this camera, you can do almost everything through the touchscreen itself. The other thing is that the menus on this thing are very basic and simple. I mean, I think if there was one word to describe this camera, I would have to say when it comes to the software, it is simple. Whether you are a seasoned professional or you're an amateur, you can pick up this camera and be able to get shooting with it fairly quickly. Now, despite all those things, it's very important that we immediately jump into what I consider to be the hurdles of this camera. The things that actually hold this camera back, starting with the battery life. Now, battery life is a known issue with this camera and I don't really wanna beat a dead horse, but I will say that the battery life it's, it's terrible. Now, ironically, I was at NAB this year, just a couple weeks ago, and Blackmagic has actually announced a battery grip for this thing. Now, it actually uses the Sony LP batteries when this thing actually uses like the Canon, like the 5D Mark IV and the 5D Mark III batteries. So it's kind of odd that they've actually decided to switch to another battery system. So if you have already invested in a ton of those Canon batteries to use with your Blackmagic, and now you're gonna get the battery grip and you have to now switch over to the Sony LP batteries. I kind of personally look at that and say that's really kind of a messed up thing to do, but if it's gonna make the camera work better and last longer, which at least what they're saying right now is with two Sony LP batteries, it should last about two hours, then I guess it's worth the hassle. Now the second biggest issue that I have with this camera is actually a really good thing but kind of a bad thing and that is the screen. This screen is massive and it is super functional but it doesn't move and that's really kind of a burden. I actually got a chance to shoot with the Sharp AK camera not too long ago and that has a big massive screen and the fact that it flips out and rotates is such a huge benefit. When you're shooting with a camera this big and this long, it... <laughs> I couldn't even get to that one. When you're shooting with a camera like this, you really want a screen that you can flip out and move, especially since it's so native to touchscreen. I mean, there's no like D-pad on it. There's no like dongle, what is it called? There's no joystick on this thing. So it really relies on you using the touchscreen. And so with that, it kind of sucks that the screen doesn't flip out. I mean, literally the day I went out to shoot with this thing, I came with a V-mount battery. I came with a cage for this thing. I came with rails. I came with a monitor and I had to have cables running everywhere in order to get this thing to a point where it could actually be a run and gun viable solution because the battery life doesn't work, because the screen isn't, isn't flexible. You have to bring so much in order to get this thing to go. And that's really one of the things that holds this camera back. 
Now, despite all that, there are a lot of really great things. And first, starting off with the image quality. The image quality on this thing is phenomenal. I mean, the fact that it shoots 4K up to 60 frames per second in RAW is amazing. It also has amazing dynamic range. I like to normally take these cameras out, shoot them around golden hour, and try to really push that high dynamic range to see how much of the highlights and the shadows I can actually retain. And this camera blew me away with the quality. On top of that, also being able to shoot it in a flat profile and then being able to actually grade it later in post was super, super helpful. I will also say that on top of the image quality, the other nice thing is the size. Now, if you can shoot this thing stripped down, the size of it is not too bad, but the weight is amazing. It's a very light camera. And so being able to have something so good in such a small package is helpful. The only problem is if you wanna shoot for a long period of time, then the size really doesn't benefit you because you end up having to rig it out in order to get it to where you need it to be in order to shoot long term. And then of course, last but certainly not least, we can't ignore it, is the price. I mean, $1,300 for a camera with these specs is the reason why this camera was so hyped when it first was announced last year. I mean, these specs, raw, 4K60 at $1,300, you can't ask for another camera that comes close to this. I mean, RAW is not something that's easy to come by. Now, yes, Blackmagic has like their Ursa Minis that do RAW, and you could definitely go that route, but outside of Blackmagic, no other camera company is really giving you RAW at such an affordable price. I mean, for example, this camera does technically qualify to shoot Netflix-type work on it. I mean, all the specs that Netflix wants, this camera does. At $1,300? it's hard to really beat it. Now, before we jump into answering that final question of, is this camera worth the wait? I do wanna talk about workflow for just a second. As I said earlier, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, gosh, there has to be a shorter way to say that. This camera shoots in Blackmagic RAW, which means the only system, as far as editing-wise, that currently supports that is DaVinci Resolve. Now. You do get a free copy, slash you kind of pay for it, when you buy this camera of DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is the full suite, which is awesome. And I've downloaded that and I've been playing around with the Blackmagic RAW in that system. But I would love to see support for this come over to Final Cut or into Premiere. I know a lot of people have been wanting that. I personally edit a lot of my work in Final Cut. And so having to jump from one system to the other is a new workflow and something that I'm gonna have to get used to. Now, you don't have to shoot this camera in RAW. You can also shoot this thing in ProRes. And in ProRes, this thing is a beast. I mean, the files look amazing, they're fantastic, and they work really well within Final Cut. And so nine times out of 10, unless I feel like I absolutely need that RAW, I don't ever see myself really shooting in RAW unless I'm shooting like client-based work. But as of right now, just from my test with it, I shot some stuff in Blackmagic RAW just to test it, but the ProRes looked really, really good. So with all this being said, do I think this camera is currently worth the wait? And in my honest opinion, the answer is no. I know that's gonna kinda probably make a lot of people upset, but I will say this. This camera is a phenomenal camera, and soon enough, you will be able to just order this camera and have it shipped to you almost immediately. And at the price, I definitely think it's worth it. I've heard some people having to wait three, four months after making their order before they actually physically get their camera in, and in my opinion, that's not really a good system. I mean, there are a lot of other great cameras around that price point. If you're looking for a camera that allow you to shoot and create great content today, and you don't wanna wait three months, at this price point, I don't think it's worth the three month wait or even longer. That being said, I did kinda get lucky. So not too long ago, a friend of mine actually ordered his Blackmagic RAW back in January, and it is now April, and he just got the call that his camera was ready. But he didn't really want it anymore. He had moved on to another camera because, as I've said, the wait is just really, really long. And so he hit me up and asked me if I wanted to take over his order. So... I'm actually happy to say that this Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is my camera. This is my camera, so I took over his order, and this is mine, this is my official camera. So what that means is I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos on this camera. Now, it is a phenomenal camera for the price, and that's one of the reasons why I had to jump on it. But I will say this, 
Do you need this camera in order to be a great filmmaker? No, there are so many other great cameras out there and the techniques are all the same. So definitely check out some of my other videos where I go over some of those filmmaking techniques. So that way, no matter what camera you have, you can be getting the best out of them. I also have an entire user's guide to filmmaking. So if you're a beginner and you wanna start filmmaking, I have an entire user guide. I'll have that link down below so you guys can check that out. But all in all, this is a phenomenal camera. It is a great camera, especially for the price. I know I didn't really touch on the fact that it's micro four thirds, but I'm trying to look past that for right now and see if I can actually make this thing work for myself. But all in all, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you have any additional questions on this or if there's anything else you want me to cover on this bad boy, definitely let me know down below. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions, you know what to do, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.